Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We are the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may not have prepared you for. As always, I am AJ and sitting across me, Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well, AJ. It's been a long day already. You know, normally we record in the mornings and we're recording in the evening now. So, yep. you know, I can feel the difference. I'm standing up, so I'm trying to do something a little different. And usually I'm sitting, but I'm figured I'll get into it. Oh, I know. Fo- folks at home, y'all can't see. AJ got himself a new standing desk. He's fancy. I don't fancy. know why. I, I, <laughs> it, I'm starting to realize this is a bad idea. Health repercussions, uh, man. You, it's, you get that blood flowing. It's great. Yeah, sitting at a computer doing papers all day, it, uh, it kind of harps on your back a little bit. So I figured, why not try to change it up and get a standing one? What do you mean? Inactivity, immobility, that's that's not healthy? I mean, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> only, only if you combine it with really terrible food, right? <laughs> Amen. And that's what I'm going out to eat tonight. So Yeah. When I got my professor job, within an, about a year and a half, I'd put on over 10 pounds. Oh, yeah. The cafeteria. Did you eat a lot of cafeteria food? Early on, yeah. And I did, too. Two, I was always behind the computer, you know, uh, and just, I don't know. The activity level went down like crazy, and my weight went up like crazy. Well, you know, I, I eventually, time, I eventually every, peeled it off, but you know. <laughs> every time I go to the cafeteria, I'm like, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to eat a salad. But when you put nine tons of ranch and you know everything possible on the salad, it's probably not healthy. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you're at least still getting some you know fiber in there and some vitamins and stuff like that. But yeah, you can definitely turn a salad like what what is that uh that homage to the Mexican salad the uh, the eight thousand calorie salad yeah <laughs> but it's a salad well yeah but it's, it's that's it to me it's the equivalent of going to like McDonald's and getting a super sized Big Mac but getting a Diet Coke yeah right yeah, it's just making yourself feel better and I'm all about making yourself feel better so. <laughs> All right, what you want to talk about today? Well, today we're actually starting a new series. Um, We're starting a a life series. So this isn't specifically with career. This isn't specifically with college, but this is more just on life. And and to me, it kind of has a little bit of both. It has implications of both. So this is more just general. And so the first one we're going to be talking about today is social media. I think that's such a big one uh, right now that, that everybody's, you know, most majority of people use and I would venture to say of the people who do use them, I mean, I couldn't even guess how many probably use it wrong or use uh, it in a I'm, detrimental way. Man, it is it is unreal. I mean, you know, we came through, I think you and I came through the heyday of Facebook and all that and yep. what it's turned into with Instagram and, you know, uh, Snap, Twitter, that they're coming onto the scene, you know, their entrance into the scene and the death of MySpace. You remember that? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, MySpace. What was, it? What was, was it? Tom? Facebook. Tom was the guy? Yeah, everybody was friends with Tom on MySpace. Yeah. And I don't even believe they're a company anymore. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, and now uh, I think TikTok's ruling the day, but there's other there's other social media channels out there that are coming online every day, and who, who knows what the next one's going to be, right? The, the Instas of the world and the YouTubes of the world are struggling to try to meet the demands of whatever the next big thing could be, you know? You know, and you it used to be social media, like, again, when you're talking about at the inception of, of Facebook, you know, it used to be, I remember back when you couldn't get a Facebook account unless you had a college e- email. That was the only way to get a Facebook account. And yeah, when it, was, when it was the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, when it was the Facebook. And then, you know, it slowly changed over time, and then there's new ones coming in, and then they become more niche. You know, they, they, they are meant for the not a, a holistic social approach, but like a, a social group. That's where they go now. That's where they're starting to go is like, you know, certain people, you have more like political ones, or you have more certain groups that, that go in uh, and are, are really heavily in one social media over the other. So, um, they're, they're constantly evolving. And so it's, it's very important to talk about it because like I said, a lot of people use them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Incorrectly. I mean, so, uh, let me ask you really quickly. Yeah. What, uh, are you a social media or like what, what, what social media platforms are you on? Uh, I have personal ones on Facebook. I have Instagram. I have Twitter and I have, um, like snap and, I'm um, obviously the the biggest one, the biggest social media platform out there is YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. But 
I use them for different things. So like for me, my snap, I only, only have a handful of people on snap and it's usually the people, I would say 95% of the people on snap are people that I work at camp, um, with, because that's kind of a communication tool that they use. Mm -hmm. I don't use it outside of that. Uh, Twitter, I usually use it for, and this sounds really nerdy cause I'm that nerdy person, but I love fantasy football. Mm -hmm. And so I use a lot for fantasy football news and outside of that, I don't use it for much anything else. Um, and then Instagram, it's more of just really close friends. And then Facebook is that one where again, we grew up with it. So your connections, your friends on Facebook, um, they go, they span the gamut of people, you know, and you're really close to, to people, you know, their name and they just so happen to connect with you. Like you've never talked to them outside of really Facebook, but because of, you know, time they've always been there and like, they've always been on your facebook friends and you just never really deleted them but well, see, I, I, I i did a huge purge on facebook did you yeah i was is people they were filling up my feed with all kinds of crazy comments and stuff but it's most of it political and people yeah. arguing and all that kind of stuff and i've got my opinion but i'm just gonna keep it off of facebook right yeah um, so i did a purge got rid of a lot of people who I will probably never see again in real life and, and haven't talked to in a decade, even though we've been connected on Facebook, I just happen to see their stuff. So honestly, they're trying to keep up with their life is not relevant to me. Um, and you know, like I say, uh, they probably don't even, you know, remember who I am or, or at least don't know me as the person I've become. So why stay connected in that way? So, yeah, so I, I really narrowed the scope of my, my Facebook uh, friends, but I, I hardly ever use it anyway. I, I just use it as that yearbook that just kind of hangs around. Yeah. I was going to ask you. So my, my question back to you was, are you a big poster on social media? Even though you have them, are you a big poster? So I have a few platforms, right? Mm -hmm. um, the legacy thing, Facebook from way back when. Yep. Okay. Still got that. Twitter. I use it as my newsfeed, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I'm not a big poster. LinkedIn. I, and more engaged on that one than any other. And, mm -hmm. you know, it fits for what I do, the career development sure. stuff, right? If anybody's listened to our show on, uh, yeah. on, you know, career development, uh, which by the way, I updated mine. Yeah. Oh, good. good I actually you, have so. a picture on there. All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. And that, it's my incremental steps, right? Yeah. Baby steps. How, there do, you go. how, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, One at, a bite time. at a time. There That's right. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so I don't do TikTok. I don't do Instagram. Uh, just, but, you know, like we're going to, like I hope we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. There's some good uses for social media. Sure. There's some sure. good purposes behind it, but there's also some, some bad elements to it. So if you want to jump in there, what, what do you want to do first? You want to talk about the good or the bad? Um, let's talk about, well, let's, let's just talk about, is it a good thing? Like, do you think social okay. media is a good thing just in general? Uh, do you feel like it's more good or more bad that comes from social media? Definitely more bad. Do you? Okay. Yeah, definitely. And that's the sad thing too, because when I, when I, when I saw that question, like my mind went to pretty much a lot of stuff we see in the world is that. It was created out of, well, and this one is not created out of something good, but it was, it, it was grown, I guess you would say, in a way to connect people uh, after it got past what it was really created for. But it was, it was grown by the masses to stay in connection with people, which is a good thing. Yeah. And a lot of things that are, are grown for good tend to turn back for something bad. And yeah. it's now got into that point where it's just, it can, it can, completely it can have an alternative effect on your health your mental health no question there are plenty of studies out there on the effects of social media and the worst is on developing children yep young young adults particularly females mm -hmm. i mean the depression rates have gone up exponentially yep um it's just yeah and there's so much negative behind it so all the good that you can go down and name and we probably should identify some of the good with the bad yeah right? of course all of the good yeah. that you can name in my mind it just for the overall effect on the world right it no i i, I it gets a it gets a a negative rating for me so but yeah, yeah i would say this from from I've, I've talked to my wife about this my wife had facebook and instagram and um, all that kind of stuff. And she deleted it. She got rid of all of it. She deleted all of her accounts. And she said within a month, she could feel the difference of not 
having that because it does create a sense of anxiety and kind of pushes you on that sense of, of depression because you see everybody's best and you relate it to your worst. Yeah. And so she said, once you got rid of that, man, she, she could feel the, like physically feel the difference. So, well, let's, let's talk about how it can be helpful first. Let's, let's, let's start with the good. Okay. So what are, what are some ways that you can think of that social media is helpful to a person's life? So, and oh, by the way, may, let, let's 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 do something. One one slight caveat to this: let's take LinkedIn out because LinkedIn okay. is so professional yeah. that there's very there's very few. Like I think that's the outlier to me of social media. So we're looking at the common ones: so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, yeah. all those kind of things, and YouTube. Okay. So, so my opinion on this is: if you take out LinkedIn, because like you say, LinkedIn's in its own category. There's very little utility for professional uh, activity. Sure. It becomes too commonplace. So that being said, it is it is good for keeping track of people that otherwise you would never be able to keep track of. Now, Ed, and if you use it responsibly and you have an understanding of what it can do to you in terms of the fear of missing out, the uh, this false comparison of what people's lives look like versus what they really are, then it can, it can be really positive, right? Sure. I mean, to be able to keep up with people that otherwise would be too difficult and time would separate you and all that jazz, then yeah. So that's that can be a good use of it. What yeah, about you? I would you say you? I would say that the connectivity. I mean, obviously that's what it was built upon is connecting, but like from not, not from a, an individual standpoint, but for instance, like I have a a high school reunion coming up. It's a great way to connect to all the students kind of in one area rather than having to have all everybody's cell phone or everybody's contact information to send out an email. It's one location that we can go and we can put polls on to say, okay, what weekend works best for everyone, what location works best for everyone. Uh, those kind of things. Same thing for business. Business is a great way to connect your business to uh, customers if done correctly. Again, all of this is under the caveat if it's done correctly. Um, so I think, that, I mean, those are good ways that you can, or those are benefits that you can reap from from social media. But yeah, the connectivity, that would be, that's pretty much the only one I can think of. Yeah. Well, I will say this. There is the ability to use it for one, yes, a dissemination of information. It gives you a platform. A lot of people feel insignificant uh, because they don't have the ability to express their voice and influence others, right? Sure. Social media opens up an ability to connect with others. Now, we could sit on we could sit here for an hour and talk about how that distorts people's sense of accountability for what they say. Um, the we'll lack of that one next. That, yeah. The, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. But that being said, we'll talk about all the negatives that go along in a minute, but it does democratize to a certain extent, the ability to reach others. Yep. So if you have something to say, you can get it out there. There. So yeah. And I would, I would say, and again, we, we said under the caveat done right. You know, one of the caveats to me when it comes to social media is, is you are controlling of who you connect with. Like you're not just, you're not trying to gain this. You don't gain value. You don't gain personal value from the number of friends you have on, on social media. That's kind of one of those things that, that to me, social media, uh, how to use it correctly. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to befriend somebody simply just to get my numbers up. I'm not going to go mm-hmm. looking for random people. I'm not going to accept random. I'm only going to connect with people that I know. And again, everybody that I've connected with on Facebook, even though I haven't talked to them for a while, I have, I have come in contact with them or met them at some point. Um, and then, like you said, I, I, don't, I haven't purged my friends list because that's, I haven't even opened my friends list and I don't know how long I couldn't tell you how many friends I had on Facebook. But when mm-hmm. it comes to, I'm, I'm there right there with you. When it comes to the post, the, the feed and it just being clogged every time I see one, I'll just unfollow the person like unfollow it. So they, I don't see it on their feed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm so tired of that. So, well, let's get into the next question, which feeds right into that, which is 
how can social media be detrimental? Like how can, how can it cause negative impact on your life? Well, before we do, I did just have one other idea. Sure. <clears throat> People who want to be part of something that otherwise doesn't exist for them, it also opens up a community to them that they didn't have before. Sure. So I know there are, you know, uh, whatever types of clubs, communities, things like that, that you can find elsewhere on the internet, but on social media, something about the social, the social media aspect of it adds a real life nature to it. Like I can join, um, an interest group and receive emails from them and newsletters and stuff like that. But I don't feel like I'm involved on social media. If I join a particular group and they love rock climbing or they love, you know, tennis or they love whatever, right. Book club type scenario. The fact that I can talk to them, the fact that we can share things more easily and the fact that I would have never been able to meet them otherwise because they live in a different world, right? That I, stands out for me as, as a potential positive for social media. You know what? Right? You bring up a really good point there too, because as you were saying that, you, you brought something else to my mind. And that is, if you live in a community where you don't feel a part of that community, you don't mm -hmm. feel support for who you are. So specifically, I'm thinking of um, LGBTQ community. Oh yeah, that would be yeah. one Mar marginalized you, communities. Yeah, yeah, and if if you don't have the support in your physical community, then social media can give you an avenue to gain support in a digital community. Mm -hmm. You get to meet people who are of of similar you know, background to you, um, and it allows you to gain support from them, whereas you would might not be able to gain that support maybe at home, or you know in your neighborhood, or you know in the community you live in. So I do feel that that's a, a huge benefit for social media. Mm -hmm. I agree. But uh, all right. to that extent, that's, that's about all the, <laughs> that's yep. about the good I can find there, right? Yep. <laughs> Let's get into the detrimental stuff now. All right. So we talked about the good of, you know, democratizing, giving a platform. Number one, right? Misinformation. Yep. I mean, how much have we suffered in society thus far? Through the, because of the intentional spread of misinformation. Somebody said something, it looks like it's backed up by somebody else, and all of a sudden that gets forwarded through, and nothing about it is true. It increases that word-of-mouth falsehood, the, the gossip, the, the garbage. It makes yep. it real. And if you've got all, you know, there's this social tendency to, if a whole bunch of other people believe it, then you'll believe it. And even when you find out it's not true, you still say, well, it could have been true and everybody else was fooled too, but we know that this really could have happened. So it's, it makes something that never was real in your mind real anyway. It, it perpetuates, you know, falsehoods, but it also creates this mentality of disbelief. It creates these silos of just wanting to go and find information that confirms things that you otherwise, you know, would never believe. And, it can come from anybody, right? You, you don't check people's credentials who say things that, like that they actually know something. You just accept it. Like that to me is dangerous. It, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's a serious, honestly, in a way, pandemic of that's affecting society. I remember back when I was in college and I'm sure you remember this too, but do you remember when Facebook was not political? There was almost nothing political on there. That was real early on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it was just, it was nothing but, you know, having fun with friends. That's what it was. I mean, it was just joking on or reminiscing on or those kind of things. It was nothing that was, there was no really serious nature to it. No, I mean, early on, the, it, it basically, yeah, it was family pictures and stuff like yeah. that and friends connecting with each other and messaging. It It was... Uh, a way for, you know, uh, dudes to skis on girls, you know, through yeah. direct chat and stuff. You know, it was, it, it was, was the just, first Tinder. Yeah. Right. I mean, so. Well, uh, my, my detrimental part among many, many, many others, and I'm sure we're going to get to them as well, but my biggest one to me 
which I struggle like this. The, this is where I, I really focus in on when I talk about it in my classes. I talk about it with my kids um, is the security side of it. Like there's such a issue when it comes to security when uh, on social media, because you're you're essentially putting your life out on, on social media, depending on to the degree that you use it, uh, you use it and you post uh, your life. You're putting that out there for everyone. And there's a lot of stuff that you can get from that. Um, you can get, I mean, you can get your birthday, which is necessary for your credit card. You know, if you're going to buy something with your credit card, just if you, mm. if you have somebody's credit card number and you need the birthday, just go to Facebook, you can find it. And even if it's not on Facebook, you're always going to have that friend that says happy birthday. And they may not tell you on your, the day of, they may tell you the day before the day, the day after, but that's still, you know, narrowed it down to three days. That's just one of many examples. How many times have you seen people on Facebook that post when they're leaving town because they're on a flight somewhere? That's another security issue. Um, there's there's so many things. Most people's security questions for accounts that they have set up, you know, when you set up an account, they always ask you to, to put in security questions to make sure it's you. Most people's security questions are on social media, the answers mm-hmm. to them. And what makes it even better is a lot of times on social media, you find these, like they do these surveys or you answer these 50 questions. Inevitably two or three of those questions are going to be common survey questions. And it's not like somebody created these 50 questions just for the fun of it. There's a meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. And so the security side is a huge detriment to me when it, when I look at it from the perspective of, of, you know, your life. Oh yeah. The loss of privacy leads to the potential for exploitation. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Um, Another one for me is, you know, we talked about for a few minutes uh, the mental health effect, Mm -hmm. right, um, on the next generation. When you're in your developmental years, right, the world seems small. I heard somebody describe puberty as being not just a time when you're changing physically, but you're also changing emotionally where you start to get some sense of self-awareness that you realize other people in the world are looking at you or you believe that they are looking at you more than they are, right? You start to yep. get a sense of the your place in the world you're in. And that's the reason social media has such an effect on you then. You're looking at an idea of people's life, yep. uh, life through a filter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, fake life that doesn't really exist. And they post that there and then the tendency of envy, right? Well, what am I doing with my life if they're doing that with their life? Right. Why is my life not like that? As good as my life is, and my life isn't as good as that, right? That that old saying of, of comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. That is the key effect of Facebook in many realms. People post their accomplishments. They post where they, the fun things they've been, they've done, they, the places they've been, the, the people they're connected with. They, they put on filters to show that they look younger or older or um, more attractive or whatever than they do in real life. Right. Uh, you know, and it just creates this false reality, this fear of missing out this anxiety, this, uh, tendency towards depression, this lack of mental development because of all the things that you forego, you spend so much time living in this world that doesn't exist that you forego the aspects of real life, the the going out there and meeting people, the talking to them, the developing your personality other than your on screen personality, right? Um, it, type thing. And it, it, the cumulative effect is, is in my mind, devastating, right? Yeah. You're, you're creating a generation of people who don't fully develop, you know, emotionally, mentally, however you want to put it, and they have all of these things that are pulling them down into places of, well, dark depths, right? Yeah. Whether it's yeah. depression or anxiety or whatever. It's one of those areas like you're always going to put your best, you know, put forward when it comes to social media and you're posting. You're always going to show your successes. You're always going to show what the fun stuff you're doing. You're going to show the beaches that you go to. You're going to show all the fun times that you're having, all the experiences that you're, you're, you're living you're never going to show the failures. You're never going to show the the hard times unless you're wanting some kind of, you know, support, some kind of vague support. I, guess I, I think they call it vague booking is when you put some vague thing on there just to get some kind of support to make yourself feel better. Um, but you're not going to show the, the night, how many nights. I mean, you may go out to the, to, you may go to the beach for a family vacation. You post those pictures, but you're not going to show the other 
95 nights that you're staying at home, sitting on the couch, watching TV with your family, because that's not what is, you know, what the, the social media wants to see. They want to see the best and then they're going to take that best and they're going to evaluate it based on those 95 nights that they're sitting on the couch watching TV with their family going, I'm not at the beach. Mm -hmm. And, and that really puts a strain on somebody's mental health. Um, my, my other one, the last one I had about the detrimental side is I think it has created this environment, um, that is conducive to, I'll call it digital fortitude. You know, Mm -hmm. this, this, anonymous feeling where you can say, and I think you, you, you mentioned it earlier where you can say, or you, you have the feeling that you can say anything you want with no repercussions mm-hmm. and you can well, be also as, a sense of responsibility for what yeah, you say. You yeah. can be as cruel as you want to be on a forum that you feel is anonymous. Uh, and I, I think that that has now transitioned that, that, that growth in that area on a digital sense, I think has transitioned into real life. People are just saying whatever they want and not caring about the an- anonymity of it. Like they're just saying it to say it. Um, I think that's a, that's a pretty detrimental area uh, that social media has, has created in, in, in society. Yeah. If you've ever listened to some of these kids playing interconnected games, right. Oh, and yeah. the things that they say to each other, the harshness of the comments, the, because they're anonymous more or less behind an emoji or, uh, you know, a made up character of some sort in whatever game they're playing. But to say the most harsh, the most yeah. unfiltered things that they would never say in real life. They, and, you know, I went to a legal conference and people were talking about the metaverse. Yep. And they were talking about assault in the metaverse because, you know, they had the VR sets where they, you know, they were actually interacting with others physically in that environment and they were full scale assaulted. Yeah. Right. You know, gangs of guys would run up around women and, uh, you know, assault them. Yeah. It's a frightening I thing. Use the word batter. Right. I mean, yeah. because, you know, and to the extent that you have some of these sensory pads and things like that as part of your, uh, setup, you could actually feel that, right? You could yep. actually feel that other people were in effect touching you, that type of thing, right? And that, I mean, it's like a real life horror story playing out right in front of you. Even if it's an animated thing, right? To see something like that going on and these people feel like they could do that, that there are no repercussions behind that. So, I mean, from... It's even moved on from me being able to vocally go out there and, and say things that, you know, I'm not proud of. At least if you had to write it down, you could always write things down and post them in places and things like that. But you tended to think about those things a little bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just again, the the appearance of anonymity and the brazenness with which people do things and watching that. And then all of a sudden these people who either have no scruples or in stages of development where they don't realize the, the negative repercussions of their actions are mimicking it and doing the same thing. And it just leads to a degradation of decorum, right? How you treat other people. So, well, let's get off of this topic. Cause this kind of gotten a little down. Um, how would you advise people career wise and college wise? So it's either one. How would you advise people to use social media? Learn to use it for a professional purpose. And I can really only see two. Mm -hmm. One, marketing, (laughs) right? You've got a good or a service and there are people on there that are spending their time there. So it is ripe to reach them with your message, right? That's how Facebook makes money. That's how some of these other profile channels make money. They know things about you that if I want to, advertise on there, I can, I can put ads on there and target you because Facebook knows these things about you. And I can say, I want somebody uh, 30 to 40 years old, right? That's of this income group in this geographic area of the United States, right? Um, so that's one big one, right? The marketing aspect of it. And um, I would say the other one is, is, the professional networking, right? Kind of what LinkedIn's built off of. Yeah. 
so the business aspect, right? The the personal, you know, uh, development, the, the the career development aspect of it. That that's that's the positive. You got any positives, or or p- well, potential positive uses? You know, I would say, I mean, the only advice I can give really is to use it sparingly and understand the repercussions. Even though we talk about the anonymity, we were just talking about the anonymity, anonymity being uh, detrimental. Um, there's still people that that just don't understand they don't, don't understand it or they don't see it. And mm-hmm. I think when you are getting into social media, when you're dealing with social media, you got to understand that there will be repercussions to a certain degree. Now, this is not going to be, potentially it's not going to be as life-threatening as something else, but there are a lot of hiring processes that look at Facebook pages to see what you post, to see what kind of person you are. And you post something negative, then you're not going to get the job because mm-hmm. it kind of shows that that you're that type of person. Either you think that way, you act that way, depending on what you're what they're looking at. So it is going to have a repercussion. So knowing that, be very careful of what you're what you're posting and understand whatever you post, even if you delete it, it's on the internet. So, yeah. uh, I would use it, it does, very, very sparingly. It is as much as they say that, you know, there, there's that what's out there does on the internet is there forever. They, they, people do not fully understand that what you put out there really can almost always be recalled. It truly right. is out there and it, it, you know, once it gets copied or, or gets downloaded, it'll just exist perpetually and it can put a negative shadow on your life forever. Right. So I would also say too, just to kind of piggyback on that one, be very, very selective in the the group that you are close to on social media, because Mm -hmm. you are going to be judged by the sum of your peers. And if you're in a group that is, has a few bad apples, then you're going to become one of those bad apples, whether you want to or whether you are or not. And so you need to be really, really, really selective um, with your, as they say, you don't, uh, you don't change the devil. The devil changes you, right? It's just that thing about whoever you're around, you're going to assimilate to them. Yep. You know, it it may be true that you'll bring them up some, but you also go down to their level a bit as well. That is true. Yeah. So here, here's a, here's a question. We can end on this too, but as a, as a father, me and you are both fathers. Um, where are you at with parental control when it comes to social media for your kids as they grow? I've I've tried to implement it on the devices mm-hmm. rather than you know I've basically created profiles for them on devices that did not have the access to the social media channels, and then I've forbade mm-hmm. their accessing it by other methods. Now we'll see how well, but my oldest daughter is nine, yep. right? So that's very early. And I realized that same approach may not work later on. Yeah. I but would say my, the, go ahead. You know, sorry. I, I was just saying in the meantime, I've just said, this is not something you're going to be introduced to yet. Yeah. My, my, my two daughters, the only thing, the only access to, I guess you would say social media is yet YouTube. Cause they have some, and I'm not a, even a big fan of that. We kind of watch that to see. Um, but my son who's 17, I remember when he was, I think 14, 15 is when he really wanted to start getting social media. And even then we were like, you know, 14, no. And then I think it was, I want to say it was around like late in the late 15 or or 16 when he turned 16. That's when we came to the agreement that, you know, I would much rather him be exposed to social media while he's around us. So we can still, you know, teach him how to use it for the right reasons um, versus him moving out. And then all of a sudden going, you know, haywire on all social medias because, and not knowing how. So Mm. we, we worked with him and got him some social media accounts um, just so he can, he can learn how to look, how you correctly and what the repercussions could be. And, and I will say, you know, like I said, he's about to turn 18. He's done very, very well. I mean, he's granted he's, he's very much like me. He does not post hardly anything. Um, on either, he just keeps up with his friends, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm now to the point because we've had these, this year and a half that I I don't, I feel very comfortable. He will be able to, to move on in his adult life, being able to use it in the correct manner because he was brought up that way. Um, Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough balance that you go through as a parent. Like, you know, you don't want them to get to, especially like you said, nine years old. I don't want my girls to have to worry about comparing themselves to somebody else in their life. I don't even want that to be a thing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I know at some point in their life they will. So where's that balance of protecting them as much as you can until the point where you feel like, okay, now you can grow up, grow, you know, allow it to grow into their life with your help. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where well, I'm at. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think you take a great approach to it. And I, you know, my approach to it's definitely going to evolve. I hope yeah. to at least be involved in the process whereby my kids are introduced to social media. I hope that I can at least spread, express to them in a way that's meaningful to them that they can appreciate the negatives, right? Yep. The potential danger behind it. I hope that I, you know, can, can put them in an environment where they get the self-confidence and awareness uh, of, you know, life is bigger than that and that they don't need to, you know, focus or depend on that type of thing. So anyway, that being said, uh, we'll see, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, you got, you we'll got see a few how years, I'm able. So you're fine. I, so. Well, this has been a good show. Uh, I've enjoyed it. It's been kind of a, a downer. We're going to have to get an upper one. coming. Yeah, up we, we need one. an upper after that one. We're going to have a fun one. But uh, you got any party words before we head out? Just remind everybody, visit our website, reschool.com. That's with a D, not an ED. Check out our social media handles, your favorite podcasting platform. You got to like us on there. Give us all the stars you'll give us. And uh, yeah, tell other people about us. If you got questions, you know, hit us up on the social media handles or on our website, either one. And we'll we'll be more than happy to respond. Well, awesome. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.